Yesterday, we saw the highly anticipated matchup between Jake Paul and Ben Askren in the boxing ring. And this is a fight that's really been talked about since it first happened. And I really expect it continue to be talked about because it ended with Jake Paul scoring a first round KO. Now on the actual knockout punch, we saw that Jake Paul set up a beautiful right hand with the jab, which landed cleanly on Askren, knocking Askren to the ground. Askren would get up, however, the referee upon examining him decided to not allow the match to continue. Now, although Askren was able to get up after that powerful right hand was landed on him, some people are wondering and speculating whether or not he could have sustained a concussion. Now, although no official word has been released yet regarding Askren's condition, we can speculate based on his body positioning and what happened to his head as he was getting hit with that right hand. Also, there is a very specific grading system for concussions depending on the severity. And since some people may not be too familiar with that, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that in today's video. Welcome boxing fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with this video, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at that knockout punch that Jake Paul delivered onto Ben Askren in the first round. First, I'm going to show the actual video of the knockout punch so that we get a good visualization for the mechanism of injury. Then I'll go over the specific anatomy associated with a concussion. Finally, I'll go over the grading system for concussions since some may not be too familiar with that. And then I'll go over what to expect moving forward after a suspected concussion. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the section below. And finally, if you watch the fight live, what are you thinking afterwards? What are your post fight thoughts? Feel free to also post those in the comment section too. Now to begin, let's take a look at the knockout punch. Here we see Paul hits Askren with a jab and then with a strong right hand, knocking Askren to the ground. Askren would get up, but after examination from the referee, the referee would call the fight and declare that Jake Paul was the winner. Here's another angle of the knockout hit showing that it has so much force that it actually rotates Askren's head. Now here I have a model of the bottom part of the skull and the cervical spine, also known as the neck. And it's really important to know that our brains are not stationary structures, they're actually in a substance known as cerebral spinal fluid. And so this cerebral spinal fluid has a number of different functions, but you can think of it as a shock absorber. So if anybody happens to have any trauma to the head, the cerebral spinal fluid should be able to adequately protect the brain. Now, sometimes impacts are so great, such as in car accidents or contact sports, where if a person does sustain a strong force to any part of the skull, the brain can actually move around inside the skull and hit on the edge. When a force is great enough to cause the brain to hit the side of the skull, this is what we know anatomically as a concussion. So anytime a force is so great that that cerebral spinal fluid cannot adequately cushion or protect the brain, it's going to get hit onto some section of the skull, and this is going to result in what we know as a concussion. Now, direct trauma, if it's strong enough, is of course the most common mechanism to cause the brain to hit into the skull, causing the concussion. However, we see all the time where it's not so much a direct trauma, it's more of a rotational trauma. So there have been other instances where somebody is going to get hit on the chin or they're going to get hit in another section of the face, resulting in a spinning or a torsional force on the brain. And this is kind of what we saw last night. It looks like that as Paul lands that knockout punch, it is placing more of a rotational force on the brain. And this is significant because as a person is going to suffer this torsional force, it's going to affect some specific structures in the brain. When a person is going to suffer these rotational forces, this can affect two specific structures known as the midbrain and the diencephalon. Of course, we've seen it all the time where a boxer or an MMA fighter is going to get it on the chin and they're going to be knocked unconscious. This can also happen if it do not get hit on the chin as long as the torsional or rotational force is great enough. Now there is a specific grading system for concussions, grades one, two, and three. In a grade one concussion, a person is not going to lose consciousness and they're going to have symptoms typically for less than 15 minutes. In a grade two concussion, a person is going to have symptoms for greater than 15 minutes, but they're also not going to lose consciousness. And finally, in a grade three concussion, that is when the person is going to lose consciousness for a period of time. Now, no official word has been released yet based on Askren's case, but based on the video, when we see that he does absorb that knockout punch, he does fall to the floor. However, it seems that he doesn't lose consciousness and he gets back up. So 
Based on the video, it looks like we can rule out a grade three concussion. Therefore, since Askren was able to get up and it didn't look like to me based on the video that he lost any consciousness at all, if he in fact is dealing with some sort of a concussion, it's most likely between grades one and two, but this is where it's going to be very important that he goes and has an official evaluation to determine the severity. Now, in other knockout videos, we've seen that sometimes a person will go into an abnormal stiff posturing, and I've actually talked about this in my Derek Lewis versus Curtis Blades video. I'll provide a link with that as well. That one specifically is known as the fencing response, but in this case, it doesn't look like Askren goes into any of that abnormal posturing. And this is actually a very good sign because usually abnormal posturing means that a person is suffering from a severe head injury. But just because Askren did not get knocked unconscious and he didn't go into that abnormal posturing does not necessarily mean that he did not suffer a concussion on the punch. The punch, of course, is a mechanism of injury that can cause a concussion with that rotational or torsional force. So it would be really important to monitor Askren case, I suspect that he's going to have a formal evaluation with some medical professionals. They're going to monitor his symptoms and determine whether or not he's having things like headaches, dizziness, being able to stay balanced, things like that. So he'll be evaluated for all of these types of things and it'll be really important that we just monitor his case moving forward. If I happen to hear any updates regarding Ben Askren's case, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. Also, if you happen to hear any news, please also feel free to comment that as well. And that's it as of right now regarding Jake Paul's most recent knockout against Ben Askren. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Once again, if you liked today's video and you find it informative, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.